I recently engaged in several rather lengthy back and forths with several commenters and presumed vegans on some of my latest and older videos. It felt good to get pushback and to have my views challenged, and it was eye-opening in more ways than one. Two or so days later, I came across a video on the channel, What I Learned, called Vegan Diets Don't Work, Here's Why, in which many of the same points I raised in my responses to some of these commenters were also raised. I want to say before we get into this video that I never expect anyone to hear what I say and take it as established fact. The goal of this channel is to make the ears of the people who aren't privy to these issues prick up and for them to question things and be motivated to look deeper when considering veganism. It felt good to watch the video and hear exactly what I spent the last year or so looking into and learning more about being spoken about. The research and information is out there for you to find and consider whether you're open to viewing information on both sides or not. If you can't argue from both sides, it's hard to say you were informed when you made the decision to pick a side to begin with. In the comments, I was accused of several things, one of which was putting words in Cosmic Skeptic's mouth when I say that he admitted the vegan diet was unsustainable. And that brings me to today, and me noticing this video from Plant Based News and deciding to give it a watch. I'd like to sort of combine all of this together as I'm making the response, if you'll bear with me. On to the video. Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Plant Based News. A couple of weeks ago, the popular YouTube channel called What I've Learned put out a video called Vegan Diets Don't Work. This is not a surprise given the channel has put out a number of videos recently that are anti-vegan. What was interesting about this video was that it featured many ex-vegans that I personally know. In this video, I'm going to tell you the truth about these influencers, how they came out as ex-vegan, and why the plant-based diets weren't sustainable. Me and my family have struggled with health on a vegan diet. I am no longer following a vegan diet. I found it very difficult to maintain a healthy plant-based diet. I'm not vegan anymore. Through this journey, I've had the opportunity to meet many of the content creators that ditched their vegan diets. I've met people like Mikikado Avocado, for instance, before he started his fame-hungry ex-vegan downward health spiral, as well as people like Tim Sheaf and Brianna Jackson. But I want to start with Alex from Cosmic Skeptic. He quit his vegan diet a couple of months ago. He told his over 500,000 subscribers via a YouTube community post that he was reevaluating his ethical position on eating animals and having consuming animal products again, primarily but not exclusively, sea animals. More recently, he shared a video elaborating on this decision, and thankfully, we don't need to explain how you can get all the nutrients you need about this diet because he says it himself. So people have been asking, well, what's this magical nutrient that you can only get from an animal product that you can't get from plants? One of the things I want people to be wary about is this kind of slimy cop out language. The question is, What's this magical nutrient that you can only get from an animal product that you can't get from plants? Let's take a look at a list of possible suspects, shall we? Now, let's take retinol, for example. Retinol is only found in animals. It is not found in a plant. The question has been answered, but let's explore further. Beta-carotene is also called vitamin A, but it is not retinol. Beta-carotene is found in plants and gives them their orange color. It is considered a provitamin. If you consume beta-carotene, some say your body will convert it into retinol. If we consider that humans can be food for other animals, we have just found yet another animal product from which retinol can be gotten. Still not a plant. I want to clarify from the start. There isn't one. Every nutrient that you need to be healthy can be found in an adequately planned plant-based diet. And there's the rub. That wasn't the question, at least not the question you stated just moments ago. Let's take another look with the context Cosmic provides. Every nutrient that you need to be healthy can be found in an adequately planned plant-based diet. The first issue is that a plant-based diet is not a vegan diet. A vegan diet can be a plant-based diet, but not the other way around. So who the hell would argue that if you're eating a plant-based diet, which can include some animal products, you somehow wouldn't be able to get every nutrient you need to be healthy? Even if I were to be charitable and assume that he meant to say vegan or something, there is still a problem remaining, and that is if animal-based vitamins and their analogs are the same thing. They're not. I already pointed this out earlier. If I need retinol, I cannot find it in a plant. Let's take the response I received in a comment before that if I eat beta-carotene, my body turns it into retinol. If by find it in an adequately planned plant-based diet, you mean in the animal body that is the human body that you are needlessly forcing to do conversions so that it can get a relatively small amount of the real vitamin it's looking for, then I guess you're right. I guess there are some things that can be found, but to what avail? What is the point of saying you can find it if you can hardly absorb it? Can you really blame me for saying that this is slimy? Now, before we get into this properly, check out this short clip from an interview I did with Cosmic Skeptic a couple of years ago when he was a vegan. If human beings are anatomically, physiologically required animal protein or animal products for the health, for survival, would that make any of your moral arguments less watertight? No. No, I don't think so. Um, because my argument is essentially a conditional one. If we can avoid inflicting torture or suffering upon an animal, then we should do so. What's really interesting is that since that interview, we see his language change. In his message where he revealed he was quitting a vegan lifestyle, for example, he refers to sea animals as seafood, which is a simple and perhaps subconscious attempt at distancing himself from the fact that these animals are sentient beings. Sea animals and seafood are not the same. The same as a plant-based diet and a vegan diet are not the same. Some animals are considered seafood because we eat them, and some of them aren't because we don't eat them. 
So maybe he was just trying to use accurate terminology. Also, I love this abuse. When it's not a religion, you're free to adjust your morals as you mature and learn more about the world and yourself. God forbid this guy show some growth and dare to speak out against your ideology even while he was pandering to it so hard. We see the same thing of Elise, another ex-vegan YouTuber previously known as Raw Alignment, where all of a sudden sentient cows become beef. It's definitely in your best interest to source 100% grass-fed and grass-finished beef. And then all too often, fish and eggs are used as the gateway back into non-vegan lifestyle. Isn't that the soft core stuff? Like the stuff that separates vegans from vegetarians and vegetarians from meat eaters? They tried animal products, some salmon and eggs. Adding in fish and eggs. Some eggs, and then that evolved into wild cut fish. I'm eating my first egg today. And it's not just online influencers. Around the time Miley Cyrus unfollowed us, he also came out with this. I've been, was vegan for a very long time and I've had to introduce fish and omegas into my life because my brain wasn't functioning properly. I feel that I'm much- Slowly down. Now I'm so much sharper than I mm. was and I think that I was at one point pretty malnutrition. I got- the, the first night after I had that salmon, I had a wet dream. I hadn't <laughs> ejaculated in months. Yeah, well, when I hear about these cases where someone has like a single serving of fish, you know, their the life just changes overnight. It's just physiologically not really possible. That screams to me placebo effect. Even if there was something they were missing in that food, if you're just not gonna fix it that quickly. And here we are discounting the lived experience of humans because we don't have science to back it up. Do I have to show you science to prove that I have a headache or are you just going to take my word for it? Whether I believe them or not, one of the things that was a common theme in the back and forth I had with commentators I mentioned earlier was not to put words in other people's mouths or else not to insert my own personal incredulity where I don't have proof of anything to the contrary. Some random guy saying it's not possible doesn't mean it doesn't happen or that it couldn't happen or that it didn't happen. Putting aside the stories of orgasms and other stories we hear which why, why I'm not actually dismissing, but... I'm glad, but why did you show some guy dismissing it? I swear the editing on this channel is so strange. What I actually want to know is, why do we always hear about the fish and eggs first? Well, fish are essentially the polar opposite of us, and it can be hard for people to empathize with us alien friends. Similarly, eggs seem to be easily distanced from exploitation, as we see Bonnie Rebecca emphasizing how important humane eggs are. Now, being completely honest, many of us, or at least the majority of us, probably had this romantic feeling that eggs can be ethical, whether it's when we go to a friend's house and they've got backyard eggs, or whether we buy into the humane egg marketing ploys. I just want to be super clear, eggs are always the product of exploitation. Morals are subjective. If you think that eating eggs generally is immoral, then eating eggs is immoral. If you don't think that eating eggs is immoral, then it's not immoral. If you think eating ethically sourced eggs is not immoral, then it's not immoral. Yes, I understand this means that literally anybody on the planet can say that literally anything is moral or immoral. From here, the presenter goes on to explain why he feels consumption of eggs is unethical. If you'd like to attempt to be emotionally manipulated, here's a timestamp. But it goes one step further because the ethical and moral inconsistencies among eggs vegans become apparent even before they go back to consuming animal products. Take Elise Parker, for instance, who bought a dog from a breeder while still claiming to be an ethical vegan. The gatekeeping is so real. But if I can be perfectly honest, I also think that ethical vegans who keep pets are hypocritical. We see a similar thing at Bonnie Rebecca when, almost immediately after going ex-vegan, she shows off an expensive knee wool rug and a feather filled couch. If you stop being vegan for your health, why wouldn't you continue to abstain from animal products in all other aspects of your life? I get your point, and I don't necessarily disagree if that's what she did. Anyway, the next online figure I want to talk about is... John Phoenix. I always used to see him at events and then uh, a couple of years ago he made some videos about how the vegan lifestyle is very dangerous uh, and then a year later said it wasn't and jumped back onto the lifestyle so I'm not sure if he's vegan or not. But I remember seeing a post of him proudly shared on his Instagram about how he killed a reindeer. He described the process of cutting, ripping and breaking the animal's body. He claimed the lifestyle shift was due to concerns around children consuming a plant-based diet. Is there any merit to that though? I mean, there are some legitimate concerns around providing enough calories to promote growth. When you look at sort of the whole foods plant-based diet approach, you know, no oil, uh, no added sugars uh, and whatnot, it can be challenging for a child with a pretty small stomach to consume enough calories to support their growth. And yeah, if they're under eating, we might see them run into issues. If we look at um, some of the more recent studies, like the Vichy diet study out of Germany, you see that no, the, the kids, if they're eating the same amount of calories or similar amount of calories to their omnivorous counterparts, they're getting similar amount of protein. If anything, they have a favorable micronutrient intake. They grow just fine. It's very compatible with what we're seeing with omnivores. If you look at the maybe few kids who were growing at, say, a slower rate, and perhaps being qualified as, and stunted, um, they either had really short parents or they were eating very, very low amounts of calories. From what I understand, the results of the study were rather inconclusive. If I was trying to make it suit a plant-based ideology, for example, then I could say, oh, there were some positive results, so therefore it's a good example of children thriving so much so that other parents, like John Venus, should not be concerned. But if I was trying to suit an ideology on the other side, I could say, oh, it wasn't thorough enough, so therefore it's a good example of children not thriving on a plant-based diet, and parents like John Venus should be concerned. Or, as I repeatedly mentioned in the comments, you could understand that the science is at the moment inconclusive, 
and be willing to continue to look at more research or subsequent research to make a decision that is better informed. Another thing we brought up with Dr. Matthew Nagra is the observation that a lot of these ex-vegans tend to go on extreme diets. Why are you only just now introducing this guy? The editing on this channel super triggers me. Something that I see a lot in that sort of group is that they'll go with a raw vegan diet, they'll do fasting. Once they start incorporating animal foods, they'll go to the carnivore side, like never in the middle. I think a good example is Yovana Mendoza, who started off with raw veganism, even says herself she took things to the extreme right from the beginning, naming herself Ravana. She centered her YouTube channel around raw, oil-free, soy-free, gluten-free, quote unquote, cleansing recipes for weight loss, and even extreme water fast. Yeah, this is kind of a meme at this point. What came first, the eating disorder or the veganism? I will admit, one of the things that made me wary of the carnivore diet at first was just how many people I noticed tried it after being vegan. But there's something to be said about not just simply taking an influencer's word for things. After watching those people and becoming curious about the things that they said, I actually wanted to see if there was legitimate science behind it. And for some of those things, there was. There are also people like me who took on keto and carnivore dietary changes because of chronic pain. I don't know if this is an established fallacy, but just because something seems absurd on the surface doesn't mean you're right to dismiss it right off the bat as a conspiracy theory. One of the things I learned I ought to stress on this channel after having experienced the back and forth in the comment threads is that you can't prove something is wrong without proof. I wanted to prove them wrong because my beloved vegetables. I went a long time believing things that turned out to be wrong, and the goal of mine is not to be believing things that are wrong. At least Park also went raw vegan overnight, and over the years, tried every extreme version of a plant-based diet, including high carb, low fat, high fat, no carb, and water fast. Today I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm eating, a full what I eat in a day. Bonnie Rebecca and Apano also initially on the raw till four train, which is a high raw diet popularized by Freeney the Banana Girl. Then we have Tim Sheet. I tried whole food plant-based, I tried uh, like high carb diet, which was the main one for athletes. I tried high fat vegan. I tried junk food vegan and tried eating with no guilt. And then I, I got into other things like urine therapy, which for me, as the human who living that experience, I felt benefits from it for years. This is one of those circumstances where it's like, if you're looking to these people for diet or health advice for yourself, you're doing the internet wrong. I mean, if someone tells you that your credit card info word filters to X's, then it's not your fault if you believe it, right? If someone tells you that deleting system 32 will make your computer faster, it's not your fault that you didn't Google it, right? It's really easy to get taken advantage of by people that are smarter than you. So if you're not very smart, don't go on the internet. It's only safe. In my opinion, the carnivore diet is the most extreme form of elimination diet because you're eating entirely flesh, which is in this human flesh, i.e. all made up of safe. Yes, in the same way that a cat eats flesh when it eats a mouse, because that's what it has evolved to do. If it's not problematic for them, from just this standpoint, why would it be problematic for us? What is problematic about a species eating its species appropriate diet on its own? Some people with extreme allergy issues have found it beneficial in the short term, but there's no long-term data on this unsustainable, unethical pattern of eating. And it's my understanding that we don't have reliable long-term data on either carnivore or vegan diets. People such as myself simply don't want to be in pain anymore. And while we can't know the long-term impact of our actions, at least in the short term, we can have a higher quality of life. Some may argue, and I also find it compelling, that we have had a much longer history in terms of our survival as primarily meat eaters, as a species as a whole, as opposed to primarily plant eaters and comparably smaller populations. Let's remember when modern agriculture first began as opposed to how long we've been eating meat. Let's also consider the types of diseases we've started to succumb to the more we industrialize our food. And let's be frank, animals have existed alongside us with their blood, milk, eggs, flesh, bones, and organs for millions of years. The foods that make up the majority of a whole food plant-based diet today, however, didn't. Here's the really key thing. A lot of people use the carnivore diet as a halo effect to justify all forms of animal product consumption. Take Elise Parker, for example, who ate bacon, a class one carcinogen, daily during this challenge. It's pretty ironic then that she claims grass-fed beef impacts your body differently than factory farmed beef. Uh, which is sentiment we hear from most non-vegans. The same way that if you grow apples in your backyard without pesticides, you won't have nearly as negative an environmental impact from the apple as you would if you ate a commercially grown apple. I don't think this concept is difficult to grasp. Well, it would be if you're letting your ideology cloud your judgment. Yeah, there are a lot of grandiose claims made about the like grass-fed organic meat and, and that. Um, and when it comes to health, I mean, we know, uh, at least with a fair degree of certainty, some of the main components of red meat uh, in particular that are harmful. We know that um, the saturated fat content, uh, perhaps the dietary cholesterol content to a degree, perhaps the heme iron as well. This video came out on April 8th, 2023. I have no idea when the presenter had the interview with the doctor. My assumption is that it took place recently enough, though. It is my understanding that the evidence regarding saturated fat and dietary cholesterol and their influence on the human body has been deemed inconclusive, and evidence towards this can be readily found on the internet. If that wasn't the case, I would still be as wary about them as I was before, in accordance with the scientific consensus. 
He did say perhaps for cholesterol and heme iron, which maybe means he is aware. Still, when you base your behaviors on an ideology, I guess it's difficult for you to change them, even when you get information that undermines the effectiveness of said behaviors. Uh, it can be, you know, increasing risk of, of chronic diseases like cardiovascular diseases, colorectal cancer, and so on. And those are going to be inherent to grass-fed products as well. Now, if you're having really lean cuts, you have to lower in saturated fat. Perhaps the fat content is a little bit different in grass-fed options versus conventional. Um, but you're not getting rid of all of that. And we have multiple substitution analyses now um, where, you, where they model what it would look like to replace a relatively small amount of, of animal protein, let's say about 3% of calories from red meat protein in particular with plant protein. And we see reductions in risk of cardiovascular disease mortality, all-cause mortality. Um, and that's independent of the fatty acid and fiber content. One of the biggest benefits of switching from meat to, say, a plant protein source would be the increase in fiber and the decrease in saturated fat, possibly the increase in, in polyunsaturated fat, depending on which uh, sources you're using. Yet they essentially remove that from those analyses that we still see significant benefit. If we don't have reliable enough data about the research of the carnivore diet, how can we possibly know what the effects of these things could be on those populations? The influencer they're talking about is one who is trying a carnivore diet, not a mixed diet. People who oppose such a diet on the basis that the worrisome aspects of an omnivorous diet continue to be worrisome on a carnivore diet can't have their cake and eat it too. They try to do that as well sometimes with extrapolating and multiplying success of a whole foods plant-based diet according to whatever research they have onto a vegan diet because it excludes animal products. We either know enough information about the carnivore diet to discredit it or we don't. Until such research comes out, this is just musing. So moving on, another thing we hear from Elise Parker is that the carnivore diet helped with digestion. The digestion was honestly totally fine. In fact, it was way better than when I was vegan. Some people do notice, at least in the short term, some improvements in symptoms, especially gut-related symptoms um, when adopting a carnivore diet. I think it's totally um, because it is an elimination diet. If something is affecting you and you're eliminating most things, chances are you're going to hit whatever it is that is bothering you. I agree with this 100%. However, it's curious to me that the sensitivity would be coming from some kind of plant if they're so healthy for us, and apparently not from any of the animal products, even though plant-based people try to make them seem like they're the worst thing we could possibly put in our bodies. People will suggest, well, I feel great, I'm in great shape, therefore this diet is healthy, and they're looking at that short-term, say, bump in their health. But that doesn't, say, doesn't tell us anything about long-term health. Not at all. I agree with this 100%. This is why this type of science is very difficult. I touched on this point earlier, but we can't discount the lived experience of another human and expect our own lived experience to be taken seriously. So, if you're on a plant-based diet and you feel great, I can't tell you you don't feel great. If your goal is to feel great and you feel great on a carnivore diet, it's just simply the case. If that person is willing to take the risk, and I'd like to reiterate that there is risk involved in adopting both a vegan diet and a carnivore diet, it is entirely up to that individual what amount of risk and what type of risk they're willing to take to improve their health. Shouldn't be extrapolating these short-term improvements in symptoms perhaps that aren't even related to chronic disease to, oh, this is going to be fine for me over the next 30, 40, 50 years. Because this doctor wasn't introduced, I don't know what this guy is about. I don't know what he's a doctor in. I don't know if he's plant-based himself. If he is vegan, the fact that he can't see that those words are equally applicable to him is beyond my comprehension. What are your thoughts? Do you think it might be more than a coincidence that these popular ex-vegans have so many behaviors in common? What do you think? When I get asked about this, I normally tell people two things. Number one, the longest lived cultures historically consumed a nearly exclusively plant-based diet. Um, I wonder if he's talking about the blue zones, the areas of the world which had the longest living people. The places in the world where if you go there yourself and ask people what their traditional foods are, they will definitely mention an animal product, especially pork. If you go to a place where people tend to live for a long time, and record the types of foods they eat now and not necessarily what they were eating for the centuries leading up to that and expect to get some useful information, you are a first-class fool. And that's just the start. It's well known at this point that diet is not the only factor that affects longevity. And if we're just going to look at what people are doing now, can we take the people of Hong Kong, for example, of how a meat-eating population can also enjoy longevity? The life expectancy is still increasing despite their meat consumption. Number two, the largest dietetic associations in the world saying exclusively vegan diet is nutritionally adequate for all stages of life. Except they lied because it's killed infants who had the diet pushed on them by their parents. In case you are curious, this was basically the tip of the iceberg for me because I believed that claptrap about how it was healthy for everyone at all stages. I mean, they died of malnutrition. Not because they were left in a hot car, not because they were thrown down the stairs, because the diet is inadequate. What do you want to argue? That the children weren't breastfed or something? Do you know what's in breast milk? Things you guys like to purport are really deadly for humans. These parents were told the vegan diet is adequate, 
Animal milk is generally demonized in vegan populations, and yet it's a stretch of the imagination that they wouldn't breastfeed? If plants are so life-sustaining, if you can find everything you need in plants, how could this possibly happen? Don't distract from the main point by trying to make up excuses. Mean what you say and say what you mean. Your diet is either capable of sustaining human life at all stages, or it's not. Please inadvertently admit how deficient it is. Please go on and on about how all you need to do is take some supplement and basically provide yourself with life-saving medical intervention in order to quote-unquote maintain the diet. Please explain how if a person needs to supplement the diet with breast milk, how that can possibly mean the diet is adequate. What plants does a human infant need to have in order to sustain its life actually? Maybe they did breastfeed, but if the mother is under stress because she keeps taking vitamins that are analogs to the real vitamins that she requires, and therefore her body is already depleted of what she needs, what of the quality of her breast milk? Also, remember when this guy earlier made it seem like consuming something of one's self, as in the example of a human eating animal flesh, was so strange? Did you agree with him when he said that? But the breast milk is okay for some reason? That's not strange at all? We're not going to insist that it should be plants and not breast milk because ill. So the one thing I really want to stress is that if you're struggling with your health, seek out professional care, work with a doctor, get a diagnosis, hopefully, and then you can work on improving that. If that needs to be done through nutrition, then work with a nutrition professional, like a dietitian. You can perhaps get a referral from your doctor. When you're going to you know, social media for your health concerns or Googling, you're going to go down all sorts of rabbit holes. You're going to essentially be shooting in the dark. Um, there isn't a need, as far as I'm concerned, to start eating animal products again. I haven't seen a condition where that would absolutely be necessary. Sure, there are conditions where it's perhaps more difficult, in which case, yeah, professional guidance might be the way to go. But again, just get that diagnosis and work with a professional. I, I just can't reiterate that enough. I was on board with this guy completely, but then he went and shot himself in the foot. Way to poison the well. Suppose the doctor, nutritionist, or dietitian tells these people, hey, maybe it's best if you introduce some animal products. Why in the next breath completely undermine that possibility? Nobody gives a shit if you've never seen this experience. I understand it matters to you, and it has been impactful for you, but you are not every doctor everywhere, so what is this supposed to mean to the rest of us? Isn't this the kind of thing you were just trying to warn us about not listening to? Because my rabbit hole of internet searches could easily lead me to this video. Thank you for watching to the end if you could bear my airing of my recent thoughts. I encourage all comments. YouTube or Google or whichever doesn't always let me know when comments come in. Sometimes they don't email me, sometimes comments are hidden, sometimes they reappear and disappear, or sometimes people comment on multiple videos in a relatively short period of time, and one of their comments sort of slips through the cracks for a while because I just didn't notice they wrote to me more than once. I'm still trying to figure this YouTube thing out, but I always try to respond to everybody at least within reason. Drop me a line if you feel so inclined. And as always, be having a good day.